It's V Day. day. It's V Day. We are gonna go get into some of the colonies and see at least one. We're gonna take the camera with us. Yeah. But let's go do some hive inspections. Got to run into the apothecary really quick to grab my suit and you got to find your suit. I probably should have already done this, but I didn't. Look at this. Oh, I know. All right, I'm going to go inside and get our suits, my suit at least, and then I think I have a hive tool. I think there's one in the sink. I think there is oh one in the gosh, sink. Oh my gosh, we got to paint this black. I never realized this was still red. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, we'll finish painting. There's one thing about hive tools, and that is we have tons of them. We have tons of them, and we're constantly until we need them. Until we need them. Exactly. I'm gonna find one because I think I have a really pretty one in here. There's one that I've been wanting to bring home. Oh, I found it on our Etsy shop. I don't have any tea blends up right now, but we do have a lot of hive tools that we have Cerakoted and I've got something pretty exciting that I will be taking you guys here in the next couple of videos later um, and showing you something that we we got to be able to do our custom hive tools. Uh, so yeah, that's coming. I'm excited. I'll show you guys that. Uh, but we, we have a lot of fun hive tools. One of my favorites that we have right now is the Mermaid. The Mermaid hive tool apparently is a top seller. And I'm excited to see all those beautiful beekeepers out there with that mermaid style hive tool. But I gotta get my suit because I'm so excited. This is the first day we're gonna be getting into the bees of 2023. I got my suit, got my hive tool, and I got some extra batteries for my, my camera because I have a feeling we're gonna be running out of batteries here soon. Where'd you go? I lost my mama. I have a feeling I know what she's doing. She hasn't had a chance to go and take a walk. Did you see the any the baby plants we have growing? I was just looking at the plantings, but Maggie distracted me with, look, mom, look at this rock. It's so cool. <laughs> no, she got a rock. <laughs> Lovely. Ready? Let's do it. Yep. didn't have a chance to wash my suit. It was white. Now, that's why I kind of really liked my, my tan suit that I wore before. Um, like my mama, come here, show me your suit. Well, hang on, let me get my boot on, my goodness. Oh, God. I was just gonna sit down. You know what? What? I'm, I'm not bendy for the bee suit. It's not, my body's not ready. It's been too much winter. I know. I know I should have stretched out. Yes, I like to wear a suit, a full suit, and preferably a vented suit. Here's the reason why. In the summertime, if I don't want to wear uh, pants, I mean, I'm wearing shorts, but if I don't want to wear like full pants under my suits. Wear a pair of bike shorts. I know. It's nice to have a vented suit because the the wind will blow through your suit. And I'm telling you, when you're inside the colonies and you're in the mid of summer, you are going to want, do you have, come here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ew, and it's all, ew, I got two of them. Ew. <laughs> Eww. Oh, that's another thing that's nice about these yeah. suits. Yeah. Well, right. mine has the same. Get these stink bugs <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, that'll freak me out. I'll be sitting there working the bees and all of a sudden a damn stink bug fly up in my face. Oh, that would be rude. Uh, I hope I get that on camera. <laughs> uh, okay, so back to the suit conversation. All right, here's why I like to wear a fully vented suit. 
reason is, is because when you're working the colonies, I have no balance. When you're working the colonies, it's gonna be hot. And it if you, hot. it is hot. And if you like to, goodness gracious. <laughs> I can't get my pants on. I'm telling you, that's what I was saying. I'm not bendy. I'm not bendy <laughs> enough yet. <laughs> okay, come here. Hold on. Am I? You do. You have another stink bug. Oh my goodness, me! Get that stink bug. Yeah. I will. You will hear me. You will see me running out of the bee yard. She's gonna be like, Ew. Ah! wait a minute. Ew, just open this. Ugh. I hope that didn't just drop into my. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's so the the, the vented suits really nice when you're working in the colonies and and you get that like little fresh breeze of air. It's just stop. And yeah. It's, and it's like oh, you know, oh. it feels so much better. Um, versus a jacket because and I, I'll wear a vented jacket too. I just I think a suit's better because one you know preferably I got too much to do to be worrying about getting stung. Well, and it's not even that. There's a lot of... Um, I don't like to be stung. I, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be stung. I don't mess around with matches. <laughs> I go straight for a torch. And when I do my garden cleanup, I'll take a bunch of brush, a um, bunch of herbs like thyme, oregano, things that are, are dry, and I keep them kind of up here just to be able to, to use it in my smoker. Uh, I also add sometimes just a little bit of wax to it, a balled up, balled up wax. It kind of helps keep, keep the fire going. Um, and also, don't light your smoker with your, your, bale, your, your bee veil on uh, because burning flames and fabric material nylon like plastic um it's not it's not always the smartest so what you want for your smoker obviously i've got a little bit of like some woody sticks the other thing that uh, works really well for your smoker is um, pine needles dried up pine needles and so what I'm doing, I'm kind of letting it catch and then just doing the bellow. I'm not gonna blow it out, but I am going to keep it capped and then every so often give it a puff. You don't, you want nice clean, nice clean white smoke um, coming out of your, out of your smoker. If it's flames and, and sparks, I don't think your bees are gonna like that. So, a nice clean white smoke and give it a puff. And every so often, if you need to add something to it, um, it's kind of nice to have. I, are you? <laughs> it's trying to attack me. Mr. Gray, you old boy. We have to do the bees. We ha ah, that's not nice. That's not, you're not being nice. Mom, get your cat. Your cat's being a jerk. We have 17 to 24 active hives. Yeah, I had a feeling there's one that I was a little nervous about. I saw activity. Yeah. I was definitely nervous about the the Langstroth the long. Cleaning out, cleaning out the bees right now. Yeah. Cool to see. And then we got this that whole setup. That's it's yeah, done. Got, this didn't make it past winter. The bees did, but yep. not the not well, the bottom the boards. The end over there looks like we can probably take that bottom. Yeah. All right. There was definitely one that I wanted to look at, and I think you confirmed it. Yeah, I was nervous about this one. Uh, I felt like I felt like this one overswarmed last year, mm -hmm. and I I think maybe it just it looks like it ran out ran out of resources. Oh, that's sad. So there's a little bit more of a balling. It looked like it was that's the queen right there. Yeah, yep. that's what I said. So and see, look. Yeah. So they were trying to cluster. They just they ran out, mm -hmm. and I didn't do anything with this colony uh, like I did with the others. Last year we came out of winter with with survival in that colony, um, but this past last summer 
that colony I think swarmed maybe one too many times um, in all honesty and I think that by the time it was done they were done uh, and the bees that were left in it there there just wasn't enough resources I should have jumped in and intervened um, the other thing that is different about this horizontal uh, it's the Langstroth long colony versus just the traditional Langstroth with our Langstroth colonies that we have what we what we do is we build quilt boxes um, up on top and they have pine chips, cedar chips in it, a burlap sack, uh, and then vents. What we didn't do is I didn't build one for this colony this year. And the reason is, is because the colony, well, the colony was more centered versus one side. And I should have just built a massive quilt box on this. I should have definitely made a quilt box for it. Mm -hmm. um, the hard thing with this colony and this design, you can't put two uh, mediums on top of this because they they would go side by side, but it it didn't it didn't fit. See what I mean? If if this had a little bit more space, if it was just a little bit more wider, I would have been able to. Well, we could have done it. We just would have had to custom make it. I know, it. and that's what we're doing. That's, yep, that's, that's what we're going to end up doing. Game plan. Yep. Got it. All right. So screen the bottom. You know, make a box that, that, that fits this. Screen the bottom, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Burlap. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when we lay the screen, we pick it up a little bit to allow a little bit of a gap. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, so we'll do that in the same design and maybe we'll do it with a removable center just in case. Yep, I think so. So that's what we're doing. Cause that's, I can think about it, but I don't think I could build that. No, I think we can. <laughs> I'll just, that'll be a fun we project. Might have to get, we might have to get some help from the guys. That's okay. Well, I don't, no, I could probably build it. I'm pretty savvy. Yeah, well, huh? I'd rather them do it and I'll play with bees. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, let's check this one out because it's right here. If you watch real carefully, you can see them start to come in with all the different shades of pollen. No. We're gonna inspect this tiny little one right behind me. Um, I'm kind of eager to see what's inside. I would love to take you guys and do all of our our hive inspections, but we are on a little bit of a time crunch, and I hope you guys understand that. But I will show you that they are they are flying though. And then I would just we'll pull the whole quilt box up. Well, I just I open the top just to check it. Yeah, I want I do want to show. So when you lift up, uh, this is what you see inside. Now the bees don't have any access to that. Uh, we just mainly put the board down. But you come in and you can feel and see if, if the cedar wet is wet. Yeah. Um, but then there's some little vent holes and it has worked very well. Very, very well for us for many years now. Pretty good over here. Have anything on the bottom? No. All right. So this colony was kind of small going into winter, um, and we we put we put some paper down and did the the sugar mountain method on it because I was just I mean it, it went into winter with one deep and that's it. Um, and it looks like they are definitely doing good. So they are chewing up the paper, and it looks like they've pretty much eating up all that sugar, uh, which I really didn't want to do a whole lot, but it was just enough to kind of get them through so that the nectar and the pollen flow is on. But we used uh, unprinted, just unprinted newspaper to, uh, to do the sugar mountain method on this one. You guys probably want to see what we're doing. Oh, look, they got some honey already. We might wow. be talking about, we might see what's going on with the middle of this well, box. Well, it looks like good. They're, they're tapping into a little bit of their honey reserve, um, which is fine, but that's good. We'll check mm -hmm. it out. The nectar flow is starting. Well, that's the back side. Yeah, nothing full on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what we're doing, this is propolis. So you guys hear me talk about tincturing propolis. This is that bee glue 
that we use. Uh, but basically, when we do our hive inspections, we break up this little line of, of propolis right in between if you want to save your frames. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I'm glad we're doing this small one because my poor little camera is overheating. I'm telling you what, this, they've got some good looking honey over here. For right now, definitely. I knew that they were gonna be okay. I just, I had good, a good feeling about them. This is all capped honey. And if we see some brood, we'll show you the difference. But, and then all of these bees, these are all female, female worker bees. Look how fuzzy this one is right there. Yeah. The younger they are, the fuzzier they are. I need to come in here and I'll scrape all this up. I can see day old egg right in through here. I'm happy. I see this side. All right, that's a good one. Nope. I know they don't like my camera. You can tell they're stinging it. There she is. Yeah. Right there. Gorgeous. She's very beautiful and blonde. Yeah, I'm happy. All right, I say we lock this one. Lock it up. Sounds We're done. good to me. We know which one she's on. Mm -hmm. She's starting Remember. to come up. Yep, yeah, she she's goes. right there at the top. She's going back down. I think we're pretty happy with that one, but we have a lot more. I think do. 23 I count, more. Yeah, no. Four. I thought it was 20. I, I thought we it's went. It's bee math. I'm pretty sure we went into winter with 28 colonies. I know we lost one, so that's 27, but. And I think I counted 25 and three not not showing any right. viability. So we're we gonna might go, be right. We're gonna go check them. But Here we go. Thank you guys for coming and doing a little quick hive inspection. We got a lot more to go, um, but today, today we're just gonna show you one and we will we'll do this again next time. So as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys. Bye.